The patient's first visit here is, I think, unlike any other first visit that someone could have in a medical office. The first step of our new patient experience is to have a consultation in my office. So not in the dental chair, but in my office. I think they really have the opportunity to be an equal and to speak their story and their history and also what they want their future to be before they're ever brought back and told to open wide. We really use that time to listen, to listen to you, for you to listen to me, but really a time that I call co-discovery because what we really learn in that exam is who you are. What made you walk through the door? What are you looking for? Which gives us the ground to bring them back to a room where in the operatory we now begin the clinical part of the exam, which is more like a data collection. Dr. Honda takes into account their whole mouth and their whole health. Melissa, my assistant, myself and the patient, all three of us are involved. It becomes less of a falling out of things that are wrong in their mouth and more of a involving of all of our patient's senses. Do you see that? Do you taste that? Can you feel that? Does that bother you? We also take x-rays and a full set of photographs. The photographs really help us look at your mouth when you're not here. Help us diagnose. Help us look for fine things that we might have missed in your mouth. Help us communicate with you because you don't see what we see. As soon as the clinical exam is done, it's time to take a little break between planning our next visit with you, where we sit back and do our homework of looking at the x-rays, looking at our notes that we wrote, looking at your pictures, and having you think a little bit about what more you could want from, from what you learned from the exam. When we decided to go fee-for-service and stop being in network with most insurance companies, the reason we did that was because we felt that both the patient and ourselves were being shortchanged. They asked us to lower our fees and spend less time with each patient. They also indirectly asked us to work with inferior dental labs, cut our costs. It really does go back to the reason why I became a dentist. Why I wake up every morning and come to work isn't to cut corners. And I realized that if I really wanted to practice dentistry in a way that it made a difference in people's lives, I would have to be out of network. We still work with people's insurances. We still help build them. But we're not under the insurance rules of what to do and what not to do. And I felt that the focus is on the patient. Sometimes the hardest thing that people ever do when it comes to their dental health is picking up the phone. I hope that when they pick up the phone and they call us and I answer the phone, that I can give them that bit of hope that they are most likely looking for. The feeling that I want my patients to leave with is that there's hope. There's always hope. And they get to choose what they want to do.